Well, good morning and welcome again to Word for the Week, our online book study series here at Cornerstone Faith Community Church. I'm Pastor Jeremy. I'm very happy to be with you as we read, continue reading through um, uh, Max Licato's book, Traveling Light. But today we come to chapter 15, uh, where Max is going to get into the part of Psalm 23, You Anoint My Head with Oil. I absolutely love this chapter. And as a matter of fact, having read this book before we um, dove into it together, um, I, I have to admit I chose this book for us partly, well, almost largely entirely because of this chapter. This chapter is, uh, is really just an, an awesome uh, way of understanding that phrase, you anoint my head with oil, um, that I think so often we really truly don't um, think about or really understand what is being said there. It's interesting to me, when you think about that part of Psalm 23, you anoint my head with oil, I think most people would go to that uh, practice that happens in the church very often where um, maybe someone is sick, maybe someone is in a, has a desperate, desperate need, um, maybe someone has backslidden into sin, addiction, other things, uh, and so they come before the pastor or the elders of the church um, or the prayer team or somebody like that, and, uh, and, and they ask for an anointing, uh, an oil anointing. And so um, we'll, we'll take oil and we'll anoint their head with it um, sort of as a sign, a, a, a seal, if you will, of, of asking God to come and just really wrap their arms around this person. It's not something I don't, I don't know that we practice that, um, super occasionally, you know, here at Cornerstone Faith Community Church, but we certainly do. Um, and uh, it's an incredible moment. But when David's talking about anointing uh, my head with oil, he, he certainly, I think, has that kind of a situation in mind, but he's got something so much more, something so much bigger in mind. Um, Max Licato is going to bring us to this place where he says, you got to think about David's profession prior to being a king. He was a shepherd. And so how do shepherds, what, what, are they, what are they really doing with the oil and the sort of creams and stuff that they're anointing their sheep with? I love how Max Licato um, talks about the sort of three uses that shepherds have for anointing oil or, or healing oil. Um, and so, you know, in one instance, they use oils that are have sort of a fragrance in them uh, in order to... Um, uh, sort of keep bugs, insects, other kinds of pests away from the sheep. So that whatever the fragrance is that's in the oil will will cause bugs and other kinds of things to to want to steer clear of the sheep and that protects them. Uh, another use for the oil is um, sort of as a protectant against one another and other situations. So sheep have a tendency, um, especially the rams, right, during mating season to butt their heads against one another with their horns or they'll, they'll butt their heads against a tree. Uh, they'll get thorns, other kinds of things stuck in their, in their heads. And so this oil that is, or, or this cream, this salve that is put on their heads helps to protect them from those wounds. But then the third thing, of course, is the wounds right and so sometimes sheep do get wounds and so the shepherd will come with oil and anoint, and anoint or, or or put this oil on their head um, in order to heal help to heal um, at one point in the uh, chapter here at the uh, bottom of page 126 um, Max Licato asks a really important question how do you handle it how do you handle disappointment how do you handle frustration how do you handle um, all of these, uh, you had the greatest plans and now everything is totally destroyed. How do you handle that? Um, when I read that, I couldn't help but think about uh, my wife, Sarah, and I in some um, incredible moments in, in our marriage um, very early on that, uh, that radically changed really everything for us. Um, Probably the first of that was that um, uh, we, we were married um, in October, and by November, essentially all of our income to our household had been completely stripped away from us um, because of some difficult situations with jobs and other things. Uh, every, every, <laughs> every cent we had coming into our household as newlyweds a month after we were married was, was completely gone. And, and 
by the way, so was our health insurance. Um, that was an incredibly difficult moment for us. Um, we, we ended up uh, surviving, I guess is the word, uh, for quite a while, uh, uh, several years, without any kind of health insurance, without any kind of um, real significant income. Um, I was working part-time as a youth pastor and trying to finish up college. Uh, Sarah ended up working part-time uh, for um, Land's End. And uh, um, it, was, it, it, it got us through in some sense. Had it not been for um, incredibly generous family members, uh, we would have absolutely been homeless. It would have been a much different situation for us. Um, but the reality is I was thinking about how did we handle that? How did we handle it? Uh, I don't think we handled it very well. I don't think a lot of people would, but I don't think we handled it well at all. Um, we, I think, went into a state of sort of um, depression. I think we went into a state of um, ignorance. We, we wanted to sort of ignore the fact that we didn't have what we needed to survive. And so we, 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 we did survive by the grace of God, but we really, we, we wanted to ignore the simple fact that we didn't have what we needed. And so I think for, uh, for probably the next five years or so, we really went about life in ways of sort of just, okay, how do we bridge the gap between today and tomorrow? How do we bridge the gap between this week and next week? How do we bridge the gap between this month and next month? We were never thinking really, I think, beyond that. And and at some point, it, it just sort of became apparent to us, you know, that this, this was a big problem. Um, we were creating a bad financial situation for ourselves. We were not thinking about our futures. We, you know, uh, all sorts of things. And I think, um, I don't know that we necessarily made this big the decision to change things or, or, or anything of that nature. But I think even without saying anything to one another, we just sort of recognized the need for something different. And I think it was in that moment or those moments of our life that, uh, that we both went before God and sort of said, okay, we need, um, we need some oil on our heads. We need something that will help to protect us, preserve us, um, and, and we need you to kind of show us where we've gone wrong with all this. Well, the, the reason I wanted to share all this with you is that it was really probably a, a span of at least 10 years, I would say, before God um, led us to a place where we could both see clearly that we were on the road to recovery. Uh, even today, um, we are still, you know, recovering from some of those decisions that we made and some of the um, uh, bad things that happened to us. But it took a long time. In that in-between time, from when that the, 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 when everything was kind of ripped out from underneath of us till even today, what has happened in that in-between time has been the oil. God has been coming in and anointing us and saying, okay, here's, uh, here's what you need for the next year. Here's what you need for the next three months. And, and I could go on and on and on and on and on and give you example after example after example. People he brought into our lives, opportunities he's brought into our lives, um, situations that never ever unfold the way they unfolded in our lives. And, and it has all kind of led us to the place where we are right now, where we are more at least well suited for what the future might bring us than we have ever been before. Not at all because of things that we have done under our own power, but entirely because of the fact that at some point we finally just recognized we needed to submit this to God and see where he's going to take us. And and I'll be truthful about this. He brought us here to Bloomingdale, to Cornerstone Faith Community Church, to a, a church setting that um, that was definitely, I think, in a mode of struggle when we got here. And, and we've gone through some tough times together. We've gone through some great times together. Um, but I think I would call that positioning. God was kind of positioning all of us, the church, Sarah and I, our family, the whole thing to kind of uh, set us down in this pasture where we're sort of in a place of we can see a future now. We can see what 
might lie ahead and, and all of the, the amazing things that lie in store. That was not the case for us a decade ago, for sure, for Sarah and I anyways. So the point of all of this is how are you handling? When a, a moment of great disappointment or discouragement or frustration or whatever it is comes your way, how do you handle it, right? And I would argue that probably most of us don't tend to handle it well. We tend to have some kind of a response that may not be the worst thing in the world, but it's also not really the best response in the world. I don't think our number one response in the midst of those difficult times, those trying times, those troubling times, is to go to God and say, I need some oil. <laughs> I need some oil poured over my head. I need some protection. I need some provision. I need some guidance. You know, I don't, I don't think we jump to that um, conclusion. I think we tend to jump to the worst case scenarios too often. I think we sort of say, well, um, I guess this is what I'm destined for. This is all I'm ever going to have. I guess I wasn't supposed to have that good thing or have that good job or do that, you know, whatever. We go to these bad places, but you know, the reality is, is that sometimes it hurts in order for us to get to the place where we find this um, amazing blessing. Sometimes we have to go through that valley of the shadow of death in order to get to the place where we can say, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. What gets us from the valley of the shadow of death to the dwelling in the house of the Lord forever is the oil, the anointing oil of the Lord over us, protecting us and, and leading us through. So Max Licato, I think, gives uh, three great words. How do you do this? How do you seek out this oil anointing? How do you, um, how do you seek out the oil of the Lord poured over your head um, in the midst of these incredibly difficult times? Um, he, he lists three words. He says, first, go. Secondly, bow. And thirdly, trust. Three, I think, really difficult words, especially in the most difficult times of our lives. When the most difficult times of our lives come, do we naturally first think, go to God? Maybe. We might think that. I think a lot of people do think that. They think, all right, you know, um, you know, God, I'm in the midst of this terrible time. Can you just help me? But I don't know that they think beyond that. I don't know that we think beyond that. There's more than just going and asking God for help. The second piece is bowing down. That's the hard part. Submitting ourselves recognizing that we are powerless in these difficult moments of our lives, that what we need more than anything in the world is for God to anoint us with his power, with his oil to get us through, to help us slide through these things, to help us be protected as we go through, to help heal the wounds as we go through these difficult things. The bowing down, I think, is probably the hardest part of this process. The going, yes, go to God, ask for some help. We, we're, I think we're pretty good at that. But it's the bowing down, right? The, the submitting to him that is so difficult. And then the third step isn't really that much easier, is the trusting step. So you go, you bow down before him and you trust. I have always felt this way about trusting God. It should be the absolute easiest thing that we do in our whole life as Christians. Why would we not wanna trust God? God has always, always proven himself trustworthy. But our humanness, in our humanness, we want to be in control. Especially when bad times come. We're like, well, I'm going to figure this out for myself. I'll, I'll make it work. I'll get through this. Will you? Will you figure it out? Will you get through it? Will you handle it well? Or should you just hand it over to God? I can tell you with 100% confidence Time and time again, I submitted myself to my power when things got difficult. And time and time again, I was greatly disappointed in my ability to fix things. And yet again, time and time again, I found myself going back before God and saying, you were right, I was wrong. Again, you were right, I was wrong. I need your help desperately. So at the end of Lakato's chapter here, he says, in order to be anointed, the sheep must stand still, lower their heads, and let the shepherd do his work. 
Peter urges us to be humble under God's powerful hand so that he will lift you up when the right time comes. When we come to God, we make requests. We don't make demands. We come with high hopes and a humble heart. We state what we want, but we pray for what is right. And if God gives us the prison of Rome instead of the mission of Spain, we accept it because we know God will always give what is right to his people who cry to him day and night, and he will not be slow to answer them. We have to go before him, we have to bow before him, and we have to trust him. Then the oil anointing comes. That's when we are led into a place of protection, provision, uh, and being guided. Um, I pray the anointing of the Lord for you, the oil anointing over your head, because, you know, I, I can say unequivocally, we're all going through something. Every single day, we're all going through something. And the reality is, I, I know, I trust that you are going through something today too. It may not be huge, maybe little, maybe big, maybe massive. For whatever it is you're going through today, may you know the anointing of the Lord. May you feel the oil of the Lord flowing over you, protecting you. But remember, in order for you to feel that, in order for you to know that, in order for you to trust that, you've got to go before him, you've got to bow before him, and you've got to trust him. Let's, you know, I'm, 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 I'm sort of left in this place from the book of Hebrews. We're, we're preaching through the book of Hebrews right now. And, and, you know, so many times the writer of Hebrews says, so then let us hold firmly, let us grasp tightly to that which we profess and we believe. If we profess and believe that God anoints his sheep with oil in difficult moments, then let's hold firmly to that. Let's trust that. Let's let him do that for us. I hope you have a great week, an oil anointed week, and I look forward to meeting you back here again next week. See you very soon.